Hi, I'm Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our July Premium Box. This month's box is all about tinted graphite pans. We'll go over how to use them, how to combine them with different materials, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up on my art journey. Let's get into it! For our service this month, we have a Sketchbox exclusive watercolor paper pad from the Rembrandt Company. This cold pressed paper has a slight tooth to it and is super absorbent, which makes it perfect for a variety of water-based mediums. This month, we're super excited to introduce you to a brand new product from the Kuratake Company. It's going to be the Gonzai Tanbi Tinted Graphite Pans. These pans come in some beautiful muted colors, but still afford us the wide value range that we'd expect of a graphite-based medium. Let's grab the Sketchbox Signature Flat Shader included in this month's box and use it to explore the colors in our set. By adding a little bit of water directly to those pans, we can achieve an almost black color, and by adding more water, we can dilute it out to reveal more of those tranquil colors. A little bit of pigment goes a long way with these pans, as we can dilute it out to increase that value range. Now, these pans are going to be semi-staining, which means they won't reactivate fully if we add water once they're dry. And thanks to our flat shader, we can achieve really crisp graphic edges with our tinted graphite pans. And to keep those edges, it's important that you let your paper dry fully before going back in to layer other colors. Here I'm layering brown over our violet, but that violet circle is still keeping that nice edge. If you want to darken any areas, I suggest going back in with more pigment while the paper is still wet and dabbing that pigment in so it kind of fades out on its own. Because we're working in a more desaturated palette, we're not going to get too much color mixing between our pans. That's not to say that we can't achieve new hues by mixing different pans, it's just going to be a little bit more subtle. For instance, mixing the yellow and the brown pans creates this kind of nice terracotta color. Because our pans are semi-staining, the color side of our pans are going to adhere to wherever we place them, but the graphite and darker areas might pick up when you go over them later, so it's just something to be conscious of when working with this medium. One technique that's specific to our pans is that we can polish them to reveal more of a metallic sheen. Here I'm going to be using a spoon, but you can really use anything as long as it won't tear up that paper. So with a circular motion and the blunt side of my spoon, I'll polish that surface, revealing some of that metallic sheen. Now video doesn't really do this justice, so I definitely suggest trying this out at home. Our next two items are going to be a set of Artgraph water soluble pencils in 2B and 6B. B is going to represent how close to black or soft the graphite is, so 2B is going to be lighter than 6B. Because of the soft core on these pencils, they're a great addition to our box as they allow us to build the value of our Gonzai Tanby pans. Using just a little bit of water in our brush, we can activate that graphite and create some nice smooth gradients. This is also where we can really see the difference between our 2B and our darker 6B pencil. This month, I thought it'd be fun for us to revisit some of the things we learned so far this year. So we're going to combine what we learned in February with our technical drawing box with what we learned in March with rendering form. This will result in us creating a more three-dimensional object. Here I'm going to start with a cylinder and then go in and sketch the shape of a vase. Now if you're a new subscriber or just need a bit of a refresher, head over to our YouTube channel where you can check out those February videos where we do a deep dive into technical drawing. We go over how to set up your sketch and how to keep your proportions consistent. I'm going to be taking some inspiration from old Greek amphoras, but if you're looking for a bit more of a challenge, try designing your own this month. With my general shape established, I'll go in and add some contour lines. This will help me get a better understanding of my object in three-dimensional space. Let's grab the last item in our box, the Sakura Pigma Micron Brush in Dark Gray. Now depending on how we hold our brush pen, we can achieve thin or thick lines. By being conscious of our hand pressure, we can create lines with a large line weight variance, and a heavier hand is always going to result in a thicker mark. B 
Because the ink in our brush pen is going to be waterproof and archival, I'm going to use it to line our vase. That way our pencil lines will disappear, but we'll still have that nice black outline. Now if you don't want to create a vase this month, try taking some inspiration from our prompt, Shade, as the Gonsai Tambi pans are perfect for rendering light and value. At this point, the majority of my line work is complete. I'll go and add a few more elements that I'm going to use as design details later, as well as fill in any areas that I want to be black. With my line work fully dry, I'll go in and mix a bit of our red and our brown pans together and use that to tone our vase. While we don't really need to worry about any streaks at this stage, because we're going to be glazing several layers, by working fairly quickly while the paper is still wet, you can avoid any streaks or pigment buildup. With that first layer fully dry, I'll go back in with our yellow pan and start to render out some form. The slight greenish hue of that pan is going to neutralize the red in our base layer and also help to push that brown more towards that terracotta color that we saw earlier. I'll alternate between a brown mixture and that yellow pan in order to start to build up form. Now if you need a refresher on how we do this, make sure to check out our March video where we do a deep dive on how to build form. It's incredibly important that you let each layer dry as you're working on your vase, otherwise you won't be able to get those strong values. And I'm going to emphasize the darkest areas, so the black band that we filled in with the micron, with that purple color. Because our base color is warm and this purple is going to be cool, it's going to give us a high level of contrast. Now that we've done the hard part of creating structure and rendering form, it's time for us to decorate our vase. You can use the Aquagraph pencils in order to sketch in your design, but remember that they will reactivate if you go over them with water. Once I'm happy with my design, I'm going to go in with that violet pan and our brush and create those graphic elements. I'm taking some inspiration from old Greek amphoras, you can decorate it however you want. As you're in these final stages, make sure to take your time and to slow down. We've already done the hard work, so just enjoy it. Creating design elements like chevrons or diagonal lines are super easy with our brush, and you can always break down two simple lines into that element. And with that, our vase is complete. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxJuly. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.